Plastics are polymers which attain different properties which can be manipulated through the monomers. The first one is polyethylene. They are most commonly used for plastic containers, plastic bottles, and plastic bags. Now, how is polyethylene a problem? Polyethylene is one of the world's most commonly used plastic, which means it is also the most commonly discarded plastic. 300 million tons of plastic waste is discarded every year. Producing polyethylene takes large amounts of energy, which leads to high emissions of carbon dioxide, which contributes to global warming and climate change. The next plastic is terylene. This plastic is mostly used for clothing. When discarding terylene, it causes more pollution than discarding cotton, because it's not a natural fiber like cotton is, but rather a synthetic fiber, making it extremely hard to naturally decompose. The next plastic is nylon. This plastic is used to make ropes, fishing nets, tents, and cranes. Nylon is a significant problem because the greenhouse gases that are produced by nylon create nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas that is 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide, which contributes to global warming. But these three polymers all have different properties. For example, polyethylene has heat resistance, toughness, and translucency. So how do we create plastics with different properties? The main way is to change the properties of a polymer ties back down to changing the length of the polymer chain. Changing the length of the polymer chain is genuinely used to manipulate the melting point of a polymer. When the chain becomes longer, they entangle, which makes them th stick together better. This makes it harder to break the bonds between the chains and also increases the melting point. This is very useful for plastics like polyethylene, which is typically used to store food that can later be microwaved. However, these three polymers are all non-biodegradable, making it impossible for them to decompose naturally in the ground quickly. So, what are some solutions to dispose of plastics? The first kind is incineration. This may seem like a suitable idea to mass decompose significant amounts of plastics. However, the fumes created when you burn plastic is intoxicating to human health and contributes to the persisting problem of global warming, which is why the best solution for this method would be to trap the fumes in a container and bury those containers. The next method of decomposing is recycling. This is the most sustainable method because about 75% of all waste can be recycled into new materials. The only disadvantage of this method is that not many people understand how to recycle correctly, which is why teaching everyone and the generations to come how to recycle can significantly reduce our plastic waste. The last solution is burying plastics in landfills. With the amounts of plastic discarded every year, this is not an ethical method to dispose of plastic. Plastics buried deep in landfills can trickle harmful chemicals which later spread into undergrounds. The nature of plastic is the true problem. Because of their long-lasting propriety and failed ability to decompose naturally in a safe manner, this leads me to show how chemistry is trying to overcome this problem. Recently, chemists have created a new plastic known as water-soluble plastic. This is a form of packaging that is similar properties of plastic now, but can be safely disposed in hot water. This product is not made of genuine plastic, but biodegradable materials that are safe and friendly to the environment. To recap what we have learned, these are the three different polymers that we looked at today and how to manipulate polymers to attain different properties. We also learned about solutions to disposing plastics now, the safest one being recycling. And lastly, we found a new material developed through chemistry that has the potential to replace plastic waste with a much safer decomposition style. Thanks so much for watching. Um, bye.